Today we're going to be taking a look at how I created this rug for my latest project, or carpet, whatever you want to call it. Um, and there was, there was a bunch of different things I, I attempted. Um, I tried it with materials, but it, it looked flat and I didn't want it to cover the, the entire scene. I wanted it to be more of a rug than a carpet, so I wanted you to kind of see, okay, the wood's here, there's a rug on top of it. And doing that with the material, it didn't really pop that much. So I thought, okay, I'll attempt it with uh, the hair render, because that can be used with so much stuff. And I've never tried it with a rug before, and it came out really well. I uh, will be doing parts of this with Octane, but you you don't. It doesn't matter what you've got, really. It's the same premise of how I got the individual hairs to curl over. It's just it's tweaking with the material and getting it perfect. So let's get right into this. No. Oh. Making this photorealistic is very easy, um, as, as long as it's, it's clumped together, it looks right, the lighting hits it in the right way, it, 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 it's very very fast process to making it look nice. Um, in default C4D, I don't know about other renders, but I know in default C4D, the hair likes to do this thing where it likes to shine for no reason, and I guess that's because it's a, it's a hair render. And, hair's often shiny depending on your head of hair so we do have to kind of eliminate that uh, because how many rugs do you know that are shiny so yeah that shouldn't be too much of a bother we already got octane open because i was messing about uh, before do 500 by 500 um i did bump up the segments to see if it would make a difference i'm not sure it might do it might not probably but to get into the hair, let's you just select your plane, add hair, bam, we have hair already, would you look at that? <coughs> See in the next tutorial. Uh, 25, nah. You do want it to be quite thin, maybe 8. Seems enough. I did make it quite, quite, quite small. Um, one thing I made sure of though was that in the project I wasn't going to do a close up of the rug. There was a few like lower down shots, but because of that I didn't really need to bump the hair up too much. If you are doing this in Octane, I would probably suggest using scatter. You could get some much cooler effects going on, but for the sake of the tutorial and for the sake of the process I went through the first time, I didn't use scatter. So and just using the normal hair renderer. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. Bump this up. Fifty thousand. When it comes to final render time, you're probably better going seventy five hundred. I used fifty, um, and it came out really well. But you can see now it's straight, it's boring, doesn't look nice, so let's fix that. I used a grey rug, but I think I'm gonna use Fuck it, let's do a pink one. Let's do a purple rug. Purple, pink. I initially never planned on doing a tutorial for this um, until it got suggested, so thank you for that. I mean, even if you're not trying to create a rug, but understand the hair material, because the biggest thing when it comes to um, the the hair mat is understanding all of these different values, because it can make or break what you're going for, whether you're going for grass, hair, fluff, fur, whatever, it can really make or break it. So, specular, I'm turning that off. Uh, I would suggest you do the same if you're in default C4D or bump it down a lot because it just may, <laughs> just, you'll see, it just is not very nice, right, thickness. Here's what we're going to do, we're going to put that to 2, I'm going to put this to 0.5. And see now it's starting to clump up a bit more. Speaking of clump, let's go into that. Now what this does is... If you've ever tied up here, um, you see what I mean? It ties it up into little bits. We don't want that too much, 
but if it's like a worn down rug, it's been through a lot, bits are going to be clumped together, you know, stains will be on it, so, you know, it's not going to be very nice, but, let's put that down to like five. I'll let an octane catch up a bit with me here. Yeah. <clears throat> you see that's nice, it's just kind of curling in a bit in these places. I will say that the hair render is a bit tense on your machine, so just take things slow, don't rush it. I mean, my PC's a bit dated, I'm gonna upgrade it, but the things I can do, you can see what I can do in it, but the hair render always just puts me back down to like 5 mile per hour. Okay, so now we're going to start getting into this for frizz. It's where things start really coming together. <coughs> you can see things start, it starts to look a bit like grass now, but we don't want grass, so... 25... And 25... Uh, kink. Kink's always fun. It's kinky. You can see how it looks like grass. And no matter what, it's probably going to look a bit like grass, but because we're going to flatten this down and make it a bit more, you know, less curving, that's where our rug kind of comes into play. I'm going to put the kink up more, I think. It looks really nice when you get the lighting on it as well. Variation, 15. If you're going for a certain look, just really tweak with these uh, a lot and you'll, you'll get what you're looking for. I'm going to tighten it a little bit. Just a tiny bit though. And one thing I'm not doing is I'm not messing with the scale, the length, none of that. Because if you've got to think about a rug that's like mass produced or a carpet, they're not very random. They're created in very, you know, made by machines. They're not exactly handmade, these type of things. So, you know, it's not going to be very random. It's not going to be very off put. I've got a few rugs like this, and they do, they're very, very um, flat on top. If you've got one of these, I'd suggest walking around it barefoot, it's like heaven, like literally. Titan 5, all right. And one make or break thing I'll show you when we get out of this material uh, let's yeah, let's twist it I think I did twist it a little bit go away not too much though 15 I think the best thing to do really is to stack all these values on top of each other and keep them like quite low with high variation and that's when you start to get that really messy look but the thing that's giving us this rug look right now is this thickness that can you stop please thank you uh the thickness that we messed with at the start uh because grass is thin strands but because we have this kind of thick tubular type thing going on you could mess with the density but i'm gonna leave it at that for now one thing we're gonna do. I didn't do this in the in the project scene, but I just did it about an hour ago, and it came out really cool. So we'll just duplicate that, turn it off in case we fuck up. I always do that. I always just duplicate stuff in case I fuck it up. So uh, come into that. Control A. Extrude. Shoot it up a little bit. UL. I'm sorry if my right clicking is really off, it's this Intuos thing, it's just it's a pain to right click with. Bevel. Put 
to 10. Sort of do that with it. Bring it down a bit. Put the hair back on. And you'll see it will give that kind of rug look to it. Because we've created geometry on the sides. It should start to kind of flip out a little bit. No, it's not worked out now. I probably didn't make sure it enough. Anytime today would be nice. Right, I'm gonna bring this up even more. It's just the hair start coming off the sides like that. There you go, and that's exactly what. <laughs> the rugs do. You can see they're not very straight. Some of them are, but um, we don't want our rug to be like that. We want it to be random, coming off in all directions. So next thing, I'm going to create new material. Now this is probably the most important part, especially if you've got no intention of rendering like 200,000 hairs, uh, is making sure that this material underneath matches the color of the material on top. I'm going to check our values here. And the, you know, especially if you're doing a bit of a gradient here, dark to light, um, that's just, it catches light a bit nicer. Um, just match the dark, darker end. And it looks quite nice. Now you could make it glossy. Maybe put the roughness up. And say if we drop a normal map in here. Don't have to do this, but to add a bit more detail. I've got like a fabric going on underneath it. So we have hair now. Of course, if you're animating this, uh, you're going to want to go into your dynamics properties and set the rest hold to 100. Otherwise, it'll flop about uh, as soon as you click play. But because we've got it on that, it doesn't. Um, hairs. Probably a good idea to bump that up if you're doing a picture. But even here now, because we've sorted out um, these angles. with the material underneath it, these little patches are kind of masked, whereas if you didn't do that, it would be very patchy. But for lighting, uh, I would suggest HDRIs. If you're doing an interior scene, interior HDRI. Maybe this one. Ooh, very red. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Go over to path tracing. I think uh, DOF really helps with this, especially if you're. Now 
Now, would you look at that? Look at it. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a rug. Now, that looks like a lot more than 50,000 hairs, um, which is why I suggest don't go above it. Follow these steps, and you kind of, you, you gain the result. Anyway, um... It wouldn't look as nice because the hair wouldn't, uh, the light wouldn't get in and shadows wouldn't come out. I certainly suggest doing it on this amount of samples. I hope this really helped with your interior scenes. Uh, it's something I'm going to use a lot more. Uh, I've figured it out. Of course, it, it, it came to me quite quick, but at first I was really reluctant due to the render times. It didn't impact it a lot. The main thing that impacted my render times was the amount of subdivisions I had around the scene. Uh, to make everything look clean, but it was about six, seven minutes of frame. I think the highest it was twelve minutes of frame. Um, but they shouldn't really make a dent too much unless you're going to go crazy with it. it. Might be fun to use it with scatter. Um, I never know. Try it. I've only done it once or twice, but that was for I think it was for grass. I can't remember. But have fun with it. I uh, hope this tutorial came in very helpful, um, quite short, quite easy, uh, so yeah, uh, hope you took something away, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, this has been Sketchy, and I'll see you in the next one.